Every bias explained in eight minutes. Bias blind spot. The tendency to think that oneself is less affected by cognitive biases compared to others. Gambler's fallacy. Wait, what does that mean? Okay, bias blind spot. Bias blind spot. Yep. The tendency to think that oneself is less affected by cognitive biases compared to others. Okay, what is a cognitive bias? So is that like... Okay, what does that mean? I, I need... Okay, let me Google that. Let's, let's, let's figure this shit out. What is cognitive bias? Cognitive bias is a systemic pattern of deviation from normal rational judgment. Individuals create their own subjective reality from their perception of input. Oh, so it's like... Uh, so it's like racism. Okay, that makes sense. Right, is racism a cognitive bias or no? Basically, yeah. Okay. Or like, if I were to like anime, then I would assume that people who like anime aren't cringe. When in reality, they probably are cringe. Everyone is delusional except for me? Well, that's just the truth. Any other biases that he's about to go over in the rest of the video? Okay, let's figure this out. Let's keep going. Let's learn. Gambler's fallacy. Yep. Gambler's fallacy happens when there's a tendency to think that future probabilities are altered by past events. When in reality, they are unchanged. No, but no, you know, I mean, if it lands seven black in a row, it's gotta be red on the eighth time. It's gotta be, it's gotta be, it's gotta be red on the eighth time. It has just gotta be, bro. Omission bias. It's the tendency to judge harmful actions as worse or less moral than equally harmful inactions. So commission omission. Okay, so this is like saying that if someone were to beat up my friend, it would be a problem. But then if somebody were to beat up a guy who's not my friend, then I would just say, ah, it's whatever. Is that kind of what that is? Is that omission by? I mean, that's what makes sense to me, right? Okay. No, yeah, no, yeah. Fence sitters? Okay. It's like what Dish did is as bad as what Atsu did. Okay. All right. That kind of makes sense. Proportionality bias. Our innate tendency to assume that big events have big causes, which may also explain our tendency to accept conspiracy theories. Moral credential effect. Hold up, go back, my head hurts. Proportionality bias. Which may also explain our tendency to accept conspiracy theories. This was caused by a kid that threw a rock into the volcano. What the f- Equally harmful inactions. Proportionality bias. Our innate tendency to assume that big events have big causes, which may also explain our tendency to accept conspiracy theories. Oh, big events have big causes. Okay. All right. So then this is essentially saying that all of this bubbled over because of Ziox. The joke is that this was caused by Ziox, but in reality, this was caused by years of underhanded comments years of clicks, years of manipulation behind the scenes, right? Is that essentially what that means? Yeah, okay. Moral credential effect. It occurs when someone who does something good gives themselves permission to be less good in the future. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's wild. Yeah, so I raised $62,000 for charity, which means, uh, you know, now I get to go punch a kid in the face. Makes sense. Or like, oh yeah, so I just uh, I just uh, spent $100,000 doing Team C's to get litter out of the ocean. Which means I can throw this bottle out of my car now. Okay. Self-serving bias. Okay. It's the tendency to claim more responsibility for successes than failures. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. So when I win, it's because I earned it. But when I lose, it's because I got unlucky. Okay, that makes sense. Framing effect. Yep. The framing effect is the tendency to draw different conclusions from the same information, depending on how that information is presented. This includes the contrast effect, which is the enhancement or reduction of a certain stimulus's perception when compared okay. with a recently observed contrasting ob object. Actor observer bias. Okay. It's the tendency for explanations of other individuals' behaviors to overemphasize the influence of their personality and underemphasize the influence of their situation, and for explanations of one's own behaviors to do the opposite. Picture sup. What the f? When the f would I ever need that one? Object. Actor observer bias. Okay. It's the tendency for explanations of other individuals' behaviors to overemphasize the influence of their personality and underemphasize the influence of their situation, and for explanations of one's own behaviors to do the opposite. Oh, so if somebody f***s up, you're going to assume that they're the problem, but then if you were to f*** up, it's because the object is an issue. Okay, I get it. I get it. Picture superiority effect. 
The notion that concepts that are learned by viewing pictures are more easily and frequently recalled than are concepts that are learned by viewing their written word form counterparts. Okay, so picture superiority effect. So caution slippery when wet. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you show if you show visual aid, people will remember it better. Right? That's why when somebody sends a link in chat, I won't notice. But then if someone sends a link in chat and dink donks afterwards, I'll always notice. So yeah, so okay. Yeah, it makes sense. So it's like a picture's worth a thousand words. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, like the Zyox suite. Yeah, or even with Braxophone's thing where like he supplied a lot of images so it was easier to read. Makes sense. Outcome bias. It's the tendency to judge a decision by its eventual outcome instead of the quality of the decision at the time it was made. Mere ex- <laughs> Decision by its eventual outcome. I put everything on red. Instead of the quality of the decision at the time it was made. I'm a genius! Yeah, so it's essentially like, if something works out, then you're going to claim that it was, well, obviously, I'm just really smart, that's why it worked, rather than just admitting that, like, oh, yeah, I got lucky. Mere exposure <laughs> effect. The mere exposure... <laughs> so essentially, Asmogold pulling a C6 character on Honkai Star Rail. Exposure effect is a psychological phenomenon by which people tend to yep. develop liking or disliking for things merely because they are familiar with them. Mm -hmm. Hard, easy effect. It's the tendency okay. to overestimate one's ability to accomplish hard tasks and underestimate one's ability to accomplish easy ones. Wait, that's like me every day. It's merely because they are familiar with them. Wait, what's this? Mere exposure effect. The mere exposure effect yep. is a psychological phenomenon by which people tend to develop liking or disliking for things merely because they are familiar with them. Hard. Okay, that's just like a normal thing. Okay, that one I didn't need to know that at all. Okay, things that you're exposed to, you gain an opinion of. I don't I don't really see why that's a bias, but okay, that one's just kind of normal. Easy effect. It's the tendency to overestimate one's ability to accomplish hard tasks and underestimate one's ability to accomplish easy ones. Yeah, that's very true. I'll be real. Whenever I was like, uh, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just become an incredibly successful content creator. I like, it'll be easy. I, I quit my school immediately. And then like, I had to clean my dishes and I'm like, no, oh, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. Can't do that, man. Survivorship bias. Survivorship bias happens when concentrating on the people or things that survived some process and inadvertently overlooking those that did not because of their lack of visibility. Okay, hold up. Bias. Survivorship, survivorship bias. Survivorship bias happens when concentrating on the people or things that survived some process and inadvertently overlooking those that did not because of their lack of visibility. That one I don't get. Survivorship bias. Facebook had success thanks to likes. Implemented likes first, but didn't survive. Best example is World War II bomber. Look up World War II plane story. I think we can all relate to watching a movie about World War II. Okay. Seeing airplanes going down left and right at the slightest damage. Have you ever thought about why that is? Or why can't we make them tougher? Yeah. The first solution that comes to mind is putting armor on the plane. Reinforcing a plane is relatively simple. Yeah, but armor it's going to make it more used practically everywhere. However, we run into the minor problem that an airplane covered by armor, like a tank, yeah. can't take off. Yep. So where should we put that protection? The exact same question was floating in the heads of the British commanders in the Second World War. Okay. They had data on the planes that returned home and where they were hit. Okay. The suggestion was made to put armor where the most bullet holes are. Since that is apparently where the planes are being hit. Yep. The less holes, the better. Makes right? Sense. Well, not exactly. Vald Abraham, an expert of statistics, suggested that they reinforce the parts that sustained little to no damage. But why? Why? Simple. Because unlike him, the brass was committing a logical error known as survivorship bias. What? In simple terms, survivorship bias is the tendency to only focus on the survivors instead of everyone. Sometimes that means you only see the winners, not the losers. Oh! At other times, it means you only see the rich and the successful, but okay. not the thousands who also worked hard but yeah. failed. The same applies to our airplanes. Since the only ones we can observe are the ones that survived and returned home. Yep. We don't know where the planes that didn't make it home were hit. Okay, so survivorship bias is technically so when you're when you focus on the on the people who had success versus not ignoring everybody who had failure. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. All right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Bader Meinhof phenomenon. 
The bader meinhof phenomenon, also called frequency illusion, is yep. the illusion where something that has recently come to one's attention suddenly seems to appear with very high frequency shortly afterwards. The reality is that before we placed our attention on that element, we just ignored it. A yeah, so you notice something a lot more once you've paid attention to it. Okay, that makes that makes sense. I like that one a lot. It's like you do one thing and then you notice that everybody else is all has is doing that thing now, but in reality, people have already been doing that thing. So that makes sense. Availability okay. heuristics. The availability yep. heuristic is the tendency to overestimate the likelihood of events that easily come to mind. The yep. availability of memories can be influenced by how recent they are or how unusual or emotionally charged they may be. Yep. Dunning crew. So essentially, if you see a plane crash happen, you're going to think that another plane crash will happen again sooner. When in reality, it still just has the exact same probability. It's just now that you're aware of it, you're more worried that it will happen. Okay, I like that. Okay, this actually makes a lot of sense. This actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, this is good. This is really good. Danning Kruger is a big one. Kruger effect. Dunning Kruger. It's effect. the tendency for unskilled individuals to overestimate their own ability and the tendency for experts to underestimate theirs. Halo effect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. It do be like that. It really do be like that. Oh, shit, dude. Oh, shit. That's Dunning-Kruger. Dunning-Kruger. Okay, I'm gonna need to get very familiar with this. Fact. It's the tendency for a person's positive or negative traits to spill over from one personality area to another in others' perceptions of them. Pigman- Okay, wait, what's that? Did you just say Pigmanthus wine tastes as sweet as I remember? Estimate theirs. Oh my god. Halo effect. Yeah. It's the tendency for a person's positive or negative traits to spill over from one personality area to another in others' perceptions of them. Oh, okay. So people, okay. So people assume beauty equals kindness. People assume that funny equals kindness. People assume that being blunt spills into being an asshole. So essentially it's, it is... Assuming other characteristics exist due to the fact that a different entire characteristic exists. Okay, so even though you haven't been experienced to that uh, that that um, that personality trait, you'd assume that it exists because they did that. Makes sense. Yeah, bald equals evil. Yeah. Yep. Pygmalion effect. The phenomenon whereby others' expectations of a target person affect the target person's behavior in a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, so if you go up to somebody... Oh, so, okay, so the Pygmalion effect is essentially where you go up to somebody and say, Bro, just relax! Which will actually have the exact opposite effect. Or like when your ex-girlfriend is upset and then you say, Why are you so angry? Are you on your period? Okay, alright, that makes a lot of sense. That, that makes a lot of sense decoy effect. This okay. bias is widely used in marketing. It's the phenomenon whereby consumers will tend to have a specific change in preference between two options when yep. also presented with a third option that is asymmetrically dominated. An option is asymmetrically dominated when it is inferior in all respects to one option, but in comparison to the other option, it is inferior in some respects and superior in others. Selection bias. Wait, what the? Hold up. This one hurts my brain. I, I think this one's important too. Hold up is widely used in marketing. It's the phenomenon whereby consumers will tend to have a specific change in preference between two options when also presented with a third option that is asymmetrically dominated. An option is asymmetrically dominated when it is inferior in all respects to one option, but in comparison to the other option, it is inferior in some respects and superior in others. Selection bias. Okay. So, so... Okay. Oh, so Starbucks cup sizes. So it's like for $4, for $4, for $4, you can get a small, which is 12 ounces. Or you can spend $4, or you can spend $5.16 and you can get 14 ounces, right? Or, hold up. Okay, let's, let's do this here. Okay, here we go. We have a cup, right? We have a cup, and then we got a bigger cup. 12 ounce, 14 ounce, and then 20 ounce. So this one will cost you $4. And then this one will cost you $5.80. And then this one will cost you $6. 
So then this is the decoy. It's either get a small or get a large. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be real, dude. Getting getting the medium one is just always just so weird. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Selection bias is the bias introduced by the selection of individuals, groups, or data for analysis in such a way that proper randomization is not achieved, thereby failing to ensure that the sample obtained is representative of the population intended to be analyzed. Yeah, so this one essentially means selection bias is when you go up to like a group of individuals who say that Tectone's a bad guy, right? Versus the entire population where they say, Oh, I don't have any problem with it. So it's kind of like, this is also kind of like cherry picking. So selection bias is kind of like cherry picking to where it's like, if you go up to the anime community, you ask them if they like anime, they'll say, yes, we like anime, right? But if you go up to the normal human being, their, their odds of saying, yeah, we like anime is going to be much less. Okay. Yeah. Or the whole population would just say no. Okay. So selection bias is essentially an echo chamber. Yeah, that makes sense. Anchoring bias. The yeah. anchoring bias is the tendency to rely too heavily on one trait or piece of information when making decisions, usually the first piece of information acquired on that subject. This is why first impressions are so important. They paint a yep. picture of what the other person is, and that picture gets anchored, making it hard to change. This bias is often exploited during negotiations. When the seller gives a seemingly unreasonable high price, that price becomes the starting point for the negotiation, and the buyer inadequately adjusts from it. Conf yeah, absolutely. Like, like, so for me, for me, it's like everybody's first impression of me was terrible, right? So now I have to undo that because my first impression was done in 30 seconds. And then now I have to undo that over three and a half years. Or this is like Atsu and Braxophone where Atsu's quote unquote first impression was Braxophone was weird in his perspective in his mind who knows if it's the truth or not so now braxman has to work hard to dismantle that and because atsu felt so so quote unquote passionately about this supposed first interaction he's going to tell everybody hey braxman's a f creep don't talk to him yeah that's a little bit that's i mean that's insane though information bias confirmation bias is the tendency to search for interpret folk <laughs> i think john hates me no let me tell you he does focus on and remember information in a way that confirms one's preconception Wait, hold up. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, focus on, and remember information in a way that confirms one's preconception. So this is essentially you have a false idea or you have an idea of somebody. They do something that might even vaguely allude to that perception, which allows that person to overanalyze and accept something small as someone completely confirming their bias. Okay, so like, for example... If someone were to call, I think, I think Tectone's a bully. And then he were to, they were to hear me yell at an online player in a video game saying, uh, learn to gank a loser. Then they'll just confirm that they think I'm a bully. Okay. And yeah, then ignore everything that contradicts it. Yeah. So, so essentially, okay. So it's when you look for things that confer confirm your bias and ignore everything that doesn't make sense. Right, so they think that, oh, I think he hates me. And then I can do them something nice, but they're not looking for that, so they ignore it. Makes sense. Makes sense, right? So so a lot of people say, I'm horrible off stream. And then the only thing they look to are just the things that prove that I'm horrible off stream. Even though we, we all know, I mean, I'm, I'm such a good guy, right? I'm such a good guy. All right, let's continue. Options. Overconfidence effect. The it's cherry picking things that fit your narrative. Makes sense. Can we get an angel tone in chat? Overconfidence effect is the tendency yeah. to have excessive confidence in one's own answers to questions. For example, for certain types of questions, answers that people rate as 99% certain turn out to be wrong 40% of the time. That's crazy. Uh, this one, not gonna lie, boys. Not gonna lie. Big, big, big offender on this. Egocentric bias. Egocentric bias is yep. the tendency to rely too- I think that's my, my biggest issue is overconfidence. My my confidence levels for myself are insane. And I don't even know where they come from. I, I think, I, well, let me, I think I get the reason why I'm overconfident is because any, any obstacle that's been put in my way, I always overcome. Always, 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 always. So I think it's because I've never not been able to overcome anything where I'm just, I believe in myself so much. Like there's never been anything that I haven't been able to do if I just keep at it. But I think that's like most human beings. Like, I feel like if you keep at something, you will overcome. Like, 
like victory is ach is achieved by attrition 100% because like I will just never give up except hair yeah but the other thing is I'll be real I kind of like being bald like I feel I feel like I look good bald I I like it I actually don't mind it at all uh, personally, what YouTube video is that? I mean, here's the other thing. I would rather just be able to be like, yeah, okay, I don't have any hair and shave it all off rather than just like holding on to whatever, you know what? I'm not going to, never mind. I'm not going to, I don't want to take any shots at Asmund. Let's just, uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to take any shots at Miz. I'm going to just, you know, uh, let's just, let's just move forward, guys. Let's just, let's just move forward, guys. Too heavily on one's own perspective or have a higher opinion of oneself than reality. Examples of this are the false consensus effect, which is the tendency for people to overestimate the degree to which others agree with them, and the false uniqueness bias, which is the tendency of people to see their projects and themselves as more singular than they actually are. Okay, makes sense. So people assume that they're the best because they have a ego. Okay, so this is me. Information bias. Information yep. bias is a co Oh, or the egocentric bias is like dreamy, where it's like, uh, oh, I was the only person who thought of the two-piece relic set on this character. I was the only person that did it. Cognitive bias to seek information when it does not affect action. If I learn the horoscope, I'll always get it right. Information bias. Information bias is a cognitive bias to seek information when it does not affect action. What does that mean? So is that like if you were to learn all aspects and learn all of the outcomes of a gotcha system that you would feel more likely to get the desired outcome that you want, even though learning the outcomes and probability doesn't affect anything? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I like that. That's good. Hindsight bias. The hindsight bias is sometimes called the I knew it all along effect, and it is the common tendency for people to perceive past events as having been more predictable than they actually were. Yeah, so so you call something, you get lucky, and then you say you knew it rather than just admit, yeah, you got lucky. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Projection bias. It's the tendency to overestimate how much one's future selves will share one's current preferences, thoughts, and values, thus leading to suboptimal choices. Wait, hold up. Let's think here. Were Projection bias. It's the tendency to overestimate how much one's future selves will share one's current preferences, thoughts, and values, thus leading to suboptimal choices. Okay, yeah, so like it's for example, when, when I was a kid, I thought that, yeah, my lungs are good now, so they'll be good in the future, and I smoked like three packs of day when in reality i should have just known nah bro smoking your lungs up okay yeah that makes sense okay this is good this is good oh okay so assuming you're always have the same opinion yeah, yeah 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 this makes sense it's like when somebody you know somebody lives in garbage all day and they assume yeah no it'll be fine and then they have cockroaches crawling all over them okay all right that makes sense apophenia Apophenia is the tendency to perceive meaningful connections between unrelated things. This bias is one of the ways a stereotype can lead people to expect certain groups and traits to fit together and then to yep. overestimate the frequency with which these correlations actually occur. Another yep. type of apophenia is pareidolia, which happens, for example, when you see images of animals in the clouds. Okay, so it's like, okay, so so what is this one called? This is called apophe wait, apophenia. So apophenia is kind of like when you're driving and you see like a dead animal in the road and then you assume, oh God, are my animals okay? Even though it has no correlation whatsoever. Okay. This so this is this is like a big paranoia one. That's like a big paranoia one. This one I like. This is good. See, now this is this is a video that I've needed my entire life. This is so good. And hopefully I, I am trying to break it down as well from my perspective to make sure that you guys can correct me if I'm wrong and then also confirm if I'm right. That way we can all get a general understanding instead. So this will be really good to be able to have pattern recognition for the future. This is really good. Serial position effect. Yep. The serial position effect is the tendency of a person to recall the first and last items in a list better than the middle ones. Re yeah, so it's kind of like, I remember how the movie started. I remember how the movie ended. But all the stuff that happened in the middle, ah, it's a little bit hazy. right? Or, or you'll remember the first time you meet your friend. And you'll remember the last time you've ever seen them, but all the events in the middle are going to be a little bit hazy. That's good. This So this is kind of like, I remember what Paul watched. I remembered the cum shot at the end, but I don't remember every position they did. Okay, so this is serial position. That makes sense. Decency bias. 
The recency bias, this is a big one. Okay, I know this one. Recency bias gives greater importance to the most recent event, such as an interviewer who can vividly remember just the last person he interviewed because they're the most recent conversation they had. It's yep. related to the serial position effect. Authority bias. So recency bias is also kind of like, okay, so in 1992 was one of the best rumbles in WWE history. But because I just watched the 2023 rumble and it was hype, I am more likely to believe that 2023 was better because it was hype and it was more recent, right? So it's like Jujutsu Kaisen has just came off the anime. Like people are going to be talking about it. It's like, oh, go to this, but in like five years, nobody's going to be talking about it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Authority bias is the tendency to attribute greater accuracy to yeah. the opinion of an authority figure, no matter what the opinion's content is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like if, a, if the police say something to you as fact, you are more likely to assume that they're telling the truth. So it's like if someone who is well-connected in the Genshin community says something of this is how it is, you're more likely to believe them because they have the authority to make and break relationships in that community. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Unit bias. The standard suggested amount of consumption, like the food serving size, that's perceived to be appropriate. A person would consume it all, even if it was too much for that particular person. Availability. Food serving size, that's perceived to be appropriate. A person would consume it all, even if it was too much for that particular person. A yeah, so, so somebody orders a plate at Panda Express and they assume they have to eat it all because they made it for the normal human being. But even though stomach sizes vary and metabolisms vary, you may not want to eat the whole plate and you may even want a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is an issue with America. So yeah, this is this is about America. Makes sense. Availability cascade. It's a self-reinforcing process in which yep. a collective belief gains more and more plausibility through its increasing repetition in public discourse. It can be summarized in the phrase, repeat something long enough and it will become true. It's related to the availability heuristic. Band there are people who know that I'm right. And there are people who don't know that I'm right yet. Tech tone bad, tech tone bad, tech tone bad, tech tone bad, tech tone bad. Tectone bad. Tectone bad. True. Wagon effect. It's the tendency to do things because many other people do yep. the same. This effect can happen for two reasons. Conformism, when someone wants to fit in with others, or lack of information, where the person thinks that the opinion of many people is probably more accurate than just his. Yeah, so this is a big example of uh, how the everyone's wrong but me mentality takes place. A bandwagon effect is definitely when uh, you meet a girl... And she says that, oh, I really love playing support in League of Legends. And then you say, oh, yeah, I love League of Legends too, even though you don't. So I get that. So you like things because other people you like like them. Makes sense. Even though you yourself may not like them. Also, this is very clearly a duck. That is very clearly a duck. Illusory truth effect. People are more likely to identify as true statements those they have previously heard, even if they cannot consciously remember having heard them. Next in line, Wait, statements this? those they have. Illusory truth effect. People are more likely to identify as true statements those they have previously heard, even if they cannot consciously remember having heard them. What? More accurate than just his. Illusory truth effect. People are more likely to identify as true statements those they have previously heard, even if they cannot consciously remember having heard them. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's like you hear something vaguely in the past, somebody says something that's vaguely similar today, and you assume, well, yeah, I heard it once before, so yeah, it must be true. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that's kind of like when you don't ask for the source. Okay, yeah, I get that. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I heard Tecto was bad from uh, Hitler, but I can't remember who said it, so I heard it again from Kanye, so it must be true. So it's kind of like that. Okay, that makes sense. Next in line effect. When taking yep. turns speaking in a group using a predetermined order, like going clockwise around a room, people tend to have diminished recall for the words of the person who spoke immediately before them. When taking turns speaking in a group using a predetermined order, like going clockwise around a room, people tend to have diminished recall for the words of the person who spoke immediately before them. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because that when you're when you're next in line, then you aren't gonna be listening to what somebody's saying. You're anticipating what it is that you are going to say. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yep, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Good. In group bias, when when you anticipate what you are going to say rather than being readily available 
listening to what everyone else says around you, you are not a good communicator, right? You, you That's why you listen to the information, take a pause, then you continue. Listen to the information, take a pause, say what you want to say. In-group bias is the tendency for people to give preferential treatment to others they perceive to be members of their own groups. Yeah. It usually happens because we encounter and interact with people in our group much more frequently than with strangers. This makes people in our group seem unique, while people outside of our group seem boring and conformist. The mere exposure effect also plays a role in this bias. <sighs> yep. <Yeah>. Oh, man. <laughs> that is... That is very relevant. That is very relevant. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a wild. Spotlight yep. effect. It's the sensation that everybody is focused on us that comes from overestimating the extent to which other people notice our appearance or behavior. Yep. Choice supportive bias. Let's go back one more time, make sure I fully understand that. Spotlight effect. It's the sensation that everybody is focused on us that comes from overestimating the extent to which other people notice our appearance or behavior. Choice. So a spotlight effect is essentially when somebody walks into a room, like a girl walks into a room with no makeup on, and they assume that everybody is looking at them. When in reality, nobody cares about them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Or like when you walk into a room and you have a zit, and you immediately assume that everybody's looking at you. It's supportive bias. The tendency to remember our choices as better than they actually were because we tend to over-attribute positive features to options we chose and negative features to options not chosen. Ostrich effect. What the f*** does that mean? Choice supportive bias. Remember our choices as better than they actually were because, okay. because we tend to over-attribute positive features to options we chose and negative features to options not chosen. <sighs> okay. Ah. Uh... It's like you saying Hua Hua is bad. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So Hua Hua is a healer in Honkai Star Rail, and she has an attack buff, but instead of me saying that, I'm going to just say, yeah, but her character's bad, so who cares? And that supports my decision for not picking her, and then saying Fu Xuan was the better choice because she was cooler. Ostrich effect. Yep. People tend to bury their head in the sand and avoid potentially negative but useful information just to avoid psychological discomfort. Yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, exactly. It's like your bank account's running low on money, so you just don't look at it and pretend it doesn't exist. Makes Selective sense. Selective perception bias. It's the tendency not to notice and more quickly forget stimuli that cause emotional discomfort and contradict our prior beliefs. Yeah, so it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like when, it's like me and Lakari's relationship to where I know he likes lollies, but I just really, really just don't want to think about it because I know he's a good dude. So it's kind of like that. Okay. Peak end rule. People seem yep. to perceive not the sum of an experience, but the average of how it was at its peak and how it ended. I'll be making similar videos. Yeah, so the peak end rule is kind of like Genshin Impact story, where they remember the the fun little moments, but they don't remember all the dog shit uh, that went on during that. Make, makes a lot of sense. 